All right, welcome back everyone. I hope you're enjoying this 90 days security plus exam challenge. You know, the risk related to the rogue access point or unauthorized user or, or, or you know, device related risk are really, really critical for every organization. Be with me till the end, because in this video, we are going to talk about one of the most popular and most adopted security network authentication standards that every organization make use of. All right. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe now. Let's get it rolling. All right. So let's talk about IEEE 802.1x or in short, we call it as .1x. All right. So of course, as the name says, it's the IEEE standards. Now, uh, what happened is as of now, we talked about, uh, you know, user authenticating or requesting for service access. Now, from now onwards, we'll be talking about uh, you device want to access another device or probably uh, user want to access the organization resources or especially the uh, network resources or network devices. Right. So when devices on the enterprise LAN infrastructure want to communicate with each other, there has to be some standard method and this standard method should allow them to identify each other first and then they should able to start their communication. Right. So that is happening based on IEEE 802.1x. Now this is a port based authentication. That means whenever the user is authenticated, a port, a virtual port basically opens up on the network and that allows the users, uh, the organization then authenticate the user and then allows the user to access the resources based on his, uh, authorization level. Okay. Next is how exactly the identity is uh you know uh, identity is determined it's determined based on either credentials uh based on the username and password that the user enters or based on the certificates nowadays the certificate method is something which is deployed everywhere it's it's almost every organization that you talk about they tend to go for the certificates right now the one of the major practice or one of the major reason why 802.1x it's really trending because it supports EAP in a secure way. And that means I'll, I'll definitely be covering EAP in much more detail in the further next videos, but EAP for now, just understand it's the extensible authentication protocol that is used to authenticate, uh, allow authenticating for the endpoints in the wired and wireless network. So 802.1x is a standard that is used for the we use for passing the EAP package or wired or the wireless infrastructure. And it also provides an encrypted tunnel, uh, encrypted EAP tunnel as well. So that, uh, outside user or any unauthorized user should not be able to intercept or get access into the network. Right? So when you talk about the, uh, you know, the entire structure of the IEEE 802.1x, there are three components. The first is the supplicant where the user, uh, really exists. Now the supplicant, uh, the supplicant could be anything. It could be laptop. It could be desktop. It could be mobile devices, anything. Okay. It couldn't be, it can be practically anything. I'm sorry. The laptop is pretty bad. <laughs> okay. Let's, Let's go for the next component. The next component is the authenticator. Now authenticator, uh, authenticator basically, uh, can be any devices. It can be router. It can be switches. It can be access point. It can be VPN concentrator as well. Okay. And finally, there is authentication server. Okay. Authentication server, which we, which is usually the radius server. Okay. Which is usually the radius server. Now radius server can be uh, an open source radius servers, or it could be devices like TechX, 
uh, Cisco ICE, which is predominantly be used in the industry, in the enterprise network. So the communication happens from the mobile devices to the authenticator, authenticator through protocols like EAP. And then from here to here, the authentication, the request response package, package goes back and forth, right? So this is how the, you know, the request and response goes. So whenever a new system, system comes into the network, maybe a new employee or new user come into the network, he need to get connected to the nearest access point, or maybe uh, the router switches if in, in case of wired network. And once he get authenticated from the authenticator, then the request will be forwarded to the authentication servers. And the authentication servers like Radius, or Cisco I StackX enforce the policy about what he should be able to access, what he should really access. If there is any additional policy to be applied, like, you know, we should really check if the user is having an antivirus on the system or not, we can apply on, if he has the antivirus, then only he should get into the network. So those kind of a policy, those kind of condition can be applied, can be created on the authentication servers all right so that's the major purpose of authentication server which are very specialized into creating the policies rules administration operations and everything authenticator is just like an existing hardware which is which could be as i just said router switches uh, where, where you just need to connect your device physically or can be access point in case you want to connect to the network on on the wireless environment, right? So that's that's how the 802.1x really works, and it is very 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 important. Okay, it is also very important as a part of the exam as well. So keep learn do do learn about it, uh, and uh, let me know if you have any question. I would love to answer that. Thank you. Thank you.